Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is carbohydrates. So, this video would be just an introduction as to what is carbohydrate. Each of its class will be discussed later on in depth. So don't worry, we'll be discussing carbohydrates as to a brief introduction. So what are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are basically just an organic compound which has, you have to remember two things. It, it is a polyhydroxy compound and it has either a aldehyde or a ketone group present in it. So two things, one is it has polyhydroxy groups Second is, it either has aldehyde or a ketone group. What does polyhydroxy mean? The hydroxy group as in the OH group. So, at least more than two OH groups are present in a molecule of carbohydrate. Okay? So, this is basically your OH group. Aldehyde or ketone. Aldehyde group as in the CHO group. Or a ketone group which is double bond O. Okay? So whenever you look at a molecule of carbohydrate, remember just these two things. It has to be a polyhydroxy molecule along with presence of either a aldehyde or a ketone. Okay? Now there are three classes of the carbohydrates. The first one is monosaccharide, oligosaccharide, polysaccharide. The prefix itself tells you what does that mean. Mono as in just a single unit, oligo couple of monosaccharides coming together to give you oligosaccharides and poly means many units, right? The word saccharide, which is its basic meaning is sugar, okay? The Greek translation of saccharide is sugar. So, we'll be discussing each one in depth. But now, for now, time being, I'll just give you an introduction regarding these three classes, okay? So, what is monosaccharide? The backbone of such monosaccharides have at least three carbon atoms to seven carbon atoms maximum so it has three to seven carbon atoms for example glycerol aldehyde it has three carbon atoms you have another molecule called glucose it has six carbon atoms okay so you have three or Minimum is 3, at least you have a 3 carbon structure or 7 carbon backbone in a monosaccharide. Example would be the D glucose. This is the abundant form of glucose which is present in nature, present everywhere almost. Now the other form which is L-glucose. I'll let you know later on what is D-glucose and L-glucose. For now, D-glucose is the abundant form. It is also known as dextrose. Okay? Now, I've said you that minimum 3, maximum 7 carbons. You need to remember one little detail that if this monosaccharide has more than four carbon it will form a cyclic structure so if it has 
more than four carbon atom, it is going to give a cyclic structure. So that is what a monosaccharide basically means. Moving to oligosaccharide. I'm writing here the short form, you don't write it. Uh, oligosaccharide basically is you know units of monosaccharides coming together to give you a compound which is oligosaccharide. Now how many monosaccharide units? So basically it could be 3 to 20 monosaccharide units coming together and forming one molecule of oligosaccharide. These like for example this is my first monosaccharide second third okay these all three monosaccharide units are joined together by a bond which is known as glycosidic bond you need to remember this it's important to know what kind of bond joins these monosaccharide units. For example, a molecule called a molecule called sucrose. It is made up of two monosaccharide units. Which are those? One is glucose, and the other is fructose. So this is also a six-carbon monosaccharide. This is also a six carbon monosaccharide. These both come together with the form of glycosidic bond and gives you a molecule called sucrose. So you have two monosaccharide units. So basically sucrose is a disaccharide. Okay. In nature, disaccharide is the abundant form of oligosaccharide class. Most of the places disaccharides are found. Okay, remember that. Now, carbohydrates are present almost everywhere, right? But in a living cell, these oligosaccharides, especially which have three or more than three units of monosaccharide, are not free. This is my cell. Oligosaccharide won't be present randomly. They are not free. In fact, they are attached via a covalent bond to a non-sugar molecule. What is this non-sugar molecule? It's basically either a protein or a lipid. Okay. Thus, the word comes glycoconjugate. Third one. Polysaccharide. So, what is polysaccharide? Lots of monosaccharide units come together and give you polysaccharide. So, it is more than 20 and it, the number can go up to 100. So many molecules come together to give you just one molecule of polysaccharide. So, it is more than 20 up to 100 units of monosaccharide. Okay, I'll give you an example, cellulose. Or glycogen. Both have a little difference. Though both of them are polysaccharides, a little difference completely changes their property. So what is this difference? Cellulose is in the linear form. Glycogen is in branched form. So how come this difference? Remember I said you molecules like monosaccharides keep on repeating itself via a glycosidic bond. So in both the cases the D glucose keeps on repeating itself. But in the case of cellulose, the glycosidic bond is different. Here, 
glycogen, the glycosidic bond interferon. So you have the same recurring units, which is the D glucose, but the glycosidic bond is different. Thus, it has different structure. If it has different structure, it has different biological role in nature. Clear that much? So that is the introduction of carbohydrates. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.